You're not crazy. Seven phrases of gaslighting. Whenever we hear stories of people who just got out of a toxic or abusive relationship, we often wondered why they stayed to be with their partners for so long. The red flags are all there, but they still haven't left them. Well, one of the quick answers to this is gaslighting. Gaslighting is a common psychological technique abusers use to manipulate someone else. Through words, they are able to make someone question their own reality, identity, and even sanity. Although it is common, it can go undetected, causing even more harm to the victim. This hurts relationships because it can damage trust and even make arguments or issues blow up. At the same time, it also harms the subject of the gaslighting because it may end up lowering their self-esteem or concept of their reality. This is why it is important to know when a phrase becomes gaslighting. If you're wondering how to detect it, well, you've come to the right place. Here at Bright Light, we present to you the seven common phrases abusers use to gaslight their victims. But before we get started, if you're new here, please do not forget to subscribe to our channel so that you can join a community where learning about psychology is welcomed and encouraged. You can also click the notification bell so that we can notify you whenever we post new videos online. Now that we've got that covered, let's get straight into the video. To put it simply, you can never learn how to deal with gaslighting if you do not know what it looks like or you have no idea what the signs of it can be. This is why it's important to first get a glimpse of what gaslighting is. You can do this through knowing the common phrases used for it. In this video, you can also learn how to handle them using techniques that experts themselves recommend. Without further delay, let us go to the first common phrase. Number one, that's not what happened. One of the goals of gaslighting is to make you believe that your concept of reality is not the right one. This is why you may observe that those who are prone to gaslighting try their very best to say this phrase to you. In this way, they can alter and control the narrative so that it would fit their agenda. If you aren't careful enough, they can even deny the truth and change it to something that can benefit them. Some people get victimized by this phrase even though they know what happened because gaslighters tend to really defend their own version of the events. They have this knack for convincing you that you were wrong or the way you recall things are wrong. If you ever find yourself in similar situations, it will be helpful to be firm on your statements. No, you do not need to have the debating skills of a lawyer, but you do have to really stand by what you say. This can be done through saying simple yet clear and strong statements such as, I know what happened, I'm not confused about the situation. This can deter the other person from trying to manipulate you into believing their own narrative. If they insist that you are wrong, you can even tell them it's okay that you see things differently, but be firm in what you know is right. Number two, this is your own fault. This is another way of trying to transfer the responsibility and alter reality. If used frequently enough, the victim of a gaslighting may begin to feel responsible for a particular circumstance and eventually take the brunt of a relationship's issues. Try saying, I hope we can both keep accepting responsibility when we're at fault to reduce blaming each other in response. In this way, the situation is neutralized and both sides are taken into account. If things go well, this may take down the defenses of both sides, which opens them up for a healthy and productive discussion. Number three, I did that because I was trying to help you. Depending on the situation, this can be an extremely manipulative and controlling technique used to make the other person believe they are at fault and that the speaker's intentions are good. One method used frequently by gaslighters to skew how individuals perceive their realities is this one. The best way to respond to this situation is through acknowledging and giving out appreciation to their intention of wanting to help you. However, you should also tell them that in that specific situation, what they did wasn't very helpful. Then, tell them ways in which they can express their care and help instead. In this way, it gives you your agency and voice in the situation and even helps you communicate your boundaries and needs. Number four, it's not that big of a deal. Whether it's done on purpose or not, saying anything like that makes someone feel that their priorities are invalid and unimportant. It causes someone to question their emotions. The response's principal objective is to convey that your emotional response is legitimate 
it should be made obvious in your response to the circumstance that your feelings are valid, deserving of recognition. Be firm in telling them that although you acknowledge that both of you could have seen the situation differently, your feelings are not less valid than the other and vice versa. What is not a big deal to them can be a big deal to you. Number five, you're overthinking it. We can all overthink sometimes, especially when we care deeply about a certain person or situation. This can even cause us to think of scenarios that are less likely to happen and the people around us can spot this tendency. This is why sometimes, even without the intention of gaslighting, this phrase can be said. However, regardless of the intention, hearing this phrase can still feel like your feelings are not given that much validity. People can overthink things that don't need to be thought about, but if they don't have a strategy for the future, it can also lead to panic. If you experience the same thing, the best response would be to constructively say your boundaries and needs. Make it clear to them that even if they think you are just overthinking, you do need a sense of clarity through a plan for the future to feel secure and calm. You can also communicate to them your needs or if you would want them to help you plan out things or just let you be. Number six, it was just a joke. This is typically uttered in circumstances where one person has become enraged or has obviously taken offense to anything that was said in an effort to place the responsibility on the audience. People usually say this after they have said something insensitive regarding someone's appearance, character, traits, or actions. This is the way some people take the blame off of themselves. Instead, they put it on the receiver or the other person for not knowing how to take a joke. The best way to respond to this is to remember that jokes are supposed to be funny and they shouldn't be said at the expense of anyone. Always remember that if you find a statement uncomfortable, you do not have to laugh with them. Tell them how much their statement or jokes make you feel hurt and how you would much appreciate it if they stopped saying that again. Number seven, you're too emotional. This is another method used to make someone feel unimportant and turn what are probably real wounded feelings into overreactions. A sentence like that aims to minimize your emotions by downplaying the significance of the incident that gave rise to them. Always remember that all your sentiments are valid. No one can define what should be difficult or stressful for you and what shouldn't. That ends our video for today. We hope you've learned a thing or two. If you did, please like this video and leave a comment on the comment section below. We would love to hear your thoughts, suggestions, and reactions. If you want similar videos, do not forget to subscribe to us and click the notification bell so you can get notified whenever we post new videos. Until next time, bye.